Hello and welcome to News Click. Last year, News Click had done a feature on the protests by red shirt wearing demonstrators in Bangkok. These protests were since then contained by the then government led by Prime Minister Abhijit Vijayajiva. Yet the victory for the opposition truth in the recently held elections surely got to do with the support from a large section of the population which included the red shirts for opposition candidate Yingluk Shinavatra. We are with us Ms. Chanida Bamford, Deputy Director for the Focus on the Global South with whom we shall discuss the election results and more in Thailand. Welcome to News Click, Ms. Chanida. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so the victory for uh, Ms. Yingluk Shinavatra, how much of it would you attribute it to the popularity of her brother, uh, former Prime Minister uh, Thakshin Shinavatra, or do you think there is more to her popularity as a charismatic woman than just her family heritage? I think it has a lot to do with her brother's uh, popula popularity, of course. But uh, and she's also uh, quite a newcomer in terms of uh, in terms of public image. Uh, right. Like it's it's a new, but maybe that's also one of the good thing because it's a fresh face in uh, in Thai politics. Right. So that's another add up uh, for for her popular for the party's popularity. Tell us more about the uh, Phu Thai party. Uh, what were the election promises? How did they distinguish themselves from the uh, ruling Democrats? Well, in fact, uh, the, the party's platform is not that much different uh, uh, from the Democrats because they're offering also all kinds of freebies like uh, a tablet for all high school students and an increase in uh, minimum wage and uh, plus others uh, so it's the in terms of policies there all the parties basically are following this kind of what we call the populist policy no, no virtual difference between both these parties what do you think was the uh, calling card for the uh, futai party uh, what exactly was the reason that the, the last section of the population preferred the opposition over the ruling party in that sense um the Thaksin uh, Shinawatra party, the, when it began, Thai Rak Thai party, basically, which was like about 10 years ago, uh, basically changed the whole political scenes uh, in Thailand. Earlier, before that, the, um, it was, the country was basically run by bureaucrats, government right. officials, technocrats, right. Right? right? And the political parties were all only there just to kind of reap the benefit and you know create some kind of uh, uh, well uh, make, making sure that the whole machine runs uh, right. uh, which right. basically is based on all the bureaucrats and technocrats and when right. uh, Thai Rak Thai came in they really did a good um, homework so they were talking to people and finding out what they wanted and uh, finally, so they had a clear platform, policy platforms uh, at that time, which you see, 30 baht health scheme, universal 30 baht health scheme, the uh, debt moratorium for the farmers, and the 1 million baht village fund. So, uh, and that, and they, when they got elected, they actually delivered on these, basically these three uh, policies. So, right. which mean, meant that all the bureaucrats and the technocrats had to follow the policies of the political party, you know, the ruling party, for right. the first time, right. you know, for the first time in history. And uh, so that really made the Thayrak Thai party and Thaksin himself very popular. Uh, right. And well, so, yeah. so in that, in that sense, uh, the Pura Thai party now is just carrying on with that kind of uh, policies. During Thakshin Shinawatra's rule, uh, the, the Thailand could also recover from the East Asian financial crisis in a better form. So there were positive memories for uh, Shinawatra's rule and that's why his sister reaped the benefit of uh, the good uh, opinion of uh, uh, her brother, right, in that sense? I think it was more on the, on the policies as well as the the kind of um, nationalism that the party and Thaksin Shinawatra has actually uh, generated in, in fighting against the, uh, you know, paying back all the debt to the IMF and, uh, you know, so that we could be free and this kind of thing. 
and right. um, so in that sense uh, that that was then but you know what Ying Lak is uh, has that that's the le legacy basically of right. the of the Thai Rak Thai party so right. once the Thai Rak Thai party got dissolved and then you know other parties as you probably might have known already there are Palang uh, Prachachon and other that came after and right. um, I think it was still riding on the types of policies and toxins popularity all the way right. but this right. time what's different is that I think Pura Thai has did a really good um, a well planned campaign and a good choice of the party leader right. even though uh, Ying Lak is a sister of Thaksin, but she's, like I said, a fresh face. And uh, she, being a woman, she could garner more votes uh, uh, in that sense, I think, from, from other uh, men and women. But definitely um, something new and something to look forward to. You know, having a female prime minister is, is, is everybody's uh, kind of, uh, it makes everybody feel a bit like, okay, we'll come some way you know, along the road to democracy. Let's talk about the red shirts. Uh, you know, the red shirts protests in some sense last year was directed at the elites and their control over Thailand's political uh, economy. Uh, how much do you think uh, would issues concerning uh, the red shirts, uh, that is equity, income, asset distribution, uh, resource rights, etc., would be reflected in this new government's agenda? You see, in, in fact, when the red shirts uh, were doing this huge protest, it they, their demand, there was only one demand, that was right. to dissolve the parliament because the parliament at that time, the government was, was not re legitimate in their eyes because it wasn't elected uh, to be government. It right. was a kind, some kind of parliamentarian a kind of reshuffle. So the Democrat, you know, took power after right. the coup, right? And of course the, um, the, the Democrats then is identified uh, by everybody identifies a Democrat with the uh, the coup leaders because right. of course you know it's because they were in the opposition opposition to Thaksin. Right. So there was only one platform, uh, one demand, and right. uh, all these analysis on inequities and stuff. It's um, it's it's the analysis that helps helps make a lot of people more sympathetic uh, to the red shirts uh, uh, demand because they were looking for, they were uh, pointing at double standards and you know, things that have to, uh, things have to be changed. The, the, the double standards between how the governments treated the yellow shirts and then how the red shirts got treated, which is different. Uh, definitely uh, the red shirts managed to get a larger coalition behind them by uh, you know at least posturing that uh, they were for uh, you know uh, equity and uh, so on and so forth yes. yeah they were able to get a lot of support from the uh, the with the, the working class the people in bangkok were actually coming out to cheer them you know as they were protesting and uh, and i think uh, at that time there was a lot of sympathy and everybody, I think, would wanted to see it. The, the protest ended, you know, uh, peacefully. And there was a lot of push for uh, dialogue between uh, the government and the red shirts. And because that did not happen, and then instead, you know, there was a force being used, and uh, people got killed. And I think, for some part of the. Uh, the population that that was um, a black mark against the Democrats, and so I think the uh, Ying Lak is now has got some, you know, uh, support moving into the camp because also they want to see change now, right? Because we've already had the opposite government for a number of years, and you know nothing. If you're not satisfied, then here's a chance to kind of get some change. And, uh, and so Ying Lak's got that as well as uh, to her credit. Uh, how about the yellows? Uh, what do you expect uh, would be the reaction to these election results now? Um, what people were worried about was that if the uh, Pura Thai is uh, elected, then the yellow shirt might come out to protest again. But 
thankfully, uh, nothing has happened yet. And if you look at the yellow camp, they are also going different ways. There were part of them were actually contesting as a, 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 polit a small political party, and the others were uh, uh, boycotting, basically calling for no votes for the in this election. So there was already the split that was clear. I think we can say safely say now that the the yellow shares have lost the momentum, okay. and uh, and. Now it's going to be people want to give the chance to to put high and to Ying Lab particularly. How about the army? Uh, the generals before the election seem to be a bit uh, uh, hostile. I mean, not not openly, but uh, in uh, they made some statements saying that uh, they would not prefer to have uh, Ying Lab uh, coming to power. So the fact that this is a, a democratic election, this is a widely uh, popularly seen as free and fair elections. So how would the army uh, respond to the election results, in your opinion? Well, I think they have to reconcile to the fact that they are definitely not popular, unpopular, you know, yeah. by, uh, uh, by any means. Very, there would be very few people who support the coup now. And uh, the army definitely has lost a lot of credibility uh, right. in the past. And of course, that's a good thing. That's one good thing about it, about this election, that at least they are now have now uh, come to a certain uh, the army, you know, to understand that uh, their role is not to it's not this, you know, it's not to kick out the government. Um, it, but there's still, um, of course, there's still a question like what exactly is their role in democracy? And we hope that some lessons have been learned. I think we can end at that. Uh, hopefully, lessons have been learned by the military, and uh, hopefully, they do not uh, interfere in the democratic processes yet again. And hopefully, stability uh, continues after these elections. Thank you so much for joining us.